Welcome to the Anders Farm. In today's video, I will explain you what an airlift is and why it is the optimal solution to pump water in an aquaponic system. <laughs> What is an airlift and how does it work? An airlift is a water pump which pumps water with pressurized air bubbles. So the airlift itself is like a pressure chamber for air. You can pump air in the airlift. The air is distributed through this mesh here on the bottom and this mesh has a lot of little holes where the air bubbles can exit. And the air bubbles exit from the airlift into a raising pipe where the air bubbles raise to the surface and the air bubbles by raising transfer the genetic energy to the water and pushes the water out of the pump. A second effect is that the pressure is much higher the deeper the water is so where the um, air bubbles exit the airlift the pressure is higher and by rising the air bubble extends and also pushing the water. And on the very top there's an elbow which gives the water the direction I want. So air is blown into the airlift, bubbles raise and push the water in the direction the airlift is given by the elbow. So what are the advantages of an airlift? First of all, an airlift is the most energy efficient way to pump water. With little energy you get a high water volume you can pump. The second point, and to my opinion the most important point, an airlift doesn't have any moving parts. A water pump has a propeller which pumps the water, which can get stuck, which degrades over time and has to be maintained. So without any moving parts, the airlift works always. There's no malfunction in the airlift. I have airlifts in my tanks for 12 years and they're working without losing any performance. For the aquaponics, because it's a very critical part of the pump, it is very important that there's a reliable uh, working part and that's what the airlift is. Another very important point is that the airlift degases CO2 and gets a lot of oxygen into the water. While the bubbles raise in the raising pipe, it mixes with the water and it degases CO2, gets CO2 out of the water and gets lots of oxygen into the water and the degazing of CO2 is very often the limiting factor if you have a high population of fish in your tank. Another point is that a water pump has an electric cable going into the water which is a risk for an electric shock. While the air pump, the airlift, just has a air tube going into the water without any electricity. Another point is that an airlift is not good in lifting water. So if you have to lift water a certain high, then a water pump is more efficient. But why is this also an advantage? Because if you plan your system accordingly, you don't have to lift water a lot and then it's the most efficient pump and the second point with it is if in your cycle something gets clogged and the water isn't cycling anymore, the tank where you pump into, the water level rises. And if you have a water pump, it will rise and rise until it spills and it even can result into having no water anymore in the system where the fish are and they will die. Uh, with an airlift, the airlift is not good if it has a lot of pressure against it. So if you pump and something gets clogged, the airlift will pump water into the tank until the pressure gets too high and then it will, will still push water with oxygen into the tank, but also water will 
exit through the airlift back to the tank where you pump from. So the water will not spill in your tank. And still, even if your system is malfunctioning, nothing dramatic will happen. And that's also a big advantage of the airlift. How can you dimension an airlift according to the water flow you want to achieve? First of all, the performance of the airlift depends on the dimension of the pipe, of the raising pipe. The bigger the pipe, the more water you can pump. And we made our airlifts according to the standard uh, diameters of the, uh, of the normal pipes, where you just put the airlift in and you're ready to go. So there we have airlifts in the dimension 40 millimeters, 50 millimeters, 75 millimeters, 110 millimeters, and even bigger dimensions like 160 uh, millimeters or even higher. The second factor is how much air you pump into the airlift. The more air you pump into, the more water flow you will get. So this pump can also be adjusted by an air valve. You can adjust the water flow. Another factor is how high you have to lift the water. The higher you have to lift the water, the less performance you will get. And another factor is how deep the air lift is into the water. The deeper the air lift is in the water, the more time the air bubble has to rise and to get the water pumped. The deeper it is, the more performance you will get. There's like a, a point like 1.7 meters, whereas the optimal depth for the airlift, if you get go deeper than this, but that's normally not the case. Normally you have one meter or 80 centimeters, which is a good depth for the airlift. The last point for the performance is of course how the airlift is built. We developed our airlifts over a lot of years and we optimized the performance. So it depends how the distribution of the air in the airlift is, how many holes you have, how the diameter of the holes is, how the holes are built, if they're conical, how the form of the airlift itself it is. And all this contributes to, to the performance. To my knowledge, our airlifts are the most energy efficient pumps you will find on the market at the moment. How do you mount an airlift correctly? First of all, you have to take into con consideration the water level of the tank you're pumping to. The airlift should be in this height that the water level of the tank you're pumping to is a little bit beyond the top of the airlift. So that the outlet of the airlift has a little bit of air on top. Maybe the water level should be something like half of the diameter of the outlet of the airlift. Because the air bubbles which uh, pumps the water should degaze here above the water. If you sunk the airlift under the water level, performance will be a little bit weaker. Another point is that the airlift, the raising pipe, should be adjusted really vertically. If it's not vertically, but it's like this, air bubbles will collect on one side and on the other sides there, there are no air bubbles and the water can fall back on this side. So you should try to mount it really vertically. And the last factor how to mount an airlift is uh, the distance to the bottom of the tank. The water should enter into the airlift at the bottom, so there has to be a distance that there's not too much friction um, and usually a good uh, thumb of rule is take half of the diameter of the, of the raising pipe, that's the best distance for the airlift to the bottom. So if you have a 50 millimeter um, raising pipe, you take 25 millimeters to 30 millimeters distance from the airlift to the bottom. Then you have the best performance. So how does it look in real life? Here I have an airlift in 50 millimeters and if I 
put the airlift into the water, you will see if I have to lift water a lot, it's not working. It starts working the deeper the airlift gets. And if I get to the optimal depth, it has a really, really good performance and it also gets a lot of oxygen into the water. If you like this video, do us a favor and subscribe our channel and visit our webpage at andersfarm.com where you find also our airlifts in the shop and under knowledge you find a lot of tips and tricks to the topic aquaponics. See you next time at Anders Farm.